Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can create a list in SharePoint via Power Automate in one action. So we're going to do this via the Graph API and taking advantage of the fact that the SharePoint REST API and the Graph API are related and therefore we can use the send an HTTP request to SharePoint to authenticate as an end user and call the Graph API. It sounds quite complicated, but actually it's a lot easier than you might think. You can define your different columns, the data types and some of those parameters within those data types as well. For instance, the multiple choice options, or maybe how you want that date time to display. And of course, if you're building out a lot of power apps, a lot of lists, maybe you're having to build one for production and test and development, why bother with the UI in SharePoint? Take advantage of this API in Power Automate and really make your life a lot easier. So as always, if there's something that interests you, please make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demo. So to kick things off, I'm gonna start from this SharePoint site. I'll go into site contents, and we can see that currently we have no lists on this site. Moving on to Power Automate, I'm simply going to run this flow at this point, but I will explain how this all works later on. We'll put it into test mode, and within a couple of seconds, we should have a completed flow and a brand new list on our SharePoint site. Jumping over onto the site, if I do a quick refresh, not only do we see on the left-hand side we have the new list on the navigation, we also have that new list here in the site contents with a single item. Clicking on the navigation, I can open up that new list and we can explore this new item that's been created. So first thing to note is we have that required field title, but then I have various different columns based on different data types. So we've got Boolean, date time, hyperlinks, numbers, a calculated, which in this case is based on the number above plus one, a fancy number, which has some decimal places, good old text, and then a choice, where in this case, I've made a selection of green from the green, red, blue option. If I explore the list settings of this new list that's just been created, again, we can see those different data types depending on those fields. And it's worth noting that if you've ever done any Power Apps development and seen the problems with internal names and the friendly display name, if I pop open true or false, which is the name of my friendly name for this column, you'll note that the internal name is also true or false. Jumping back as an example, if I go into my fancy number column, we can see that again, the friendly name is fancy number, but the internal name is FN. So I'm able to specify both the internal name and the friendly display name as part of this API call. So I guess at this point, you're all wondering, how does this work? Well, in order to explain this, I'm going to pop open the Graph Explorer because we're actually using the Graph API, but we're using the SharePoint connector in order to authenticate. Now, if you've not yet discovered the Graph API, it's a great way to extend the functionality of your Power Automate flows way beyond the functionality that you can get via the native connectors and actions for SharePoint. Now, if I go into this URL here and paste in a URL, which includes both a site ID and some verbs for sites and lists, if I run that query, I'm going to get the, the lists that are on this site returned to me in the body below. And you'll see as I scroll down, I have my new list that's on this particular site because I know already the GUID for my site. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, where on earth do I get the GUID from? Don't worry, I've got that covered also in my explanation coming up shortly. Next up, what we really want to do is we want to post because if we can post, then we can create a brand new list. And for that, we need a body. So if I paste in this sample body here, you'll see some familiar keys and names. We have a display name for our new list. We have a description, and then we have a definition of columns, which is based on an array. So at the moment, I have one column. It's based on the text data type. If I wanted to have a second column, I could copy this object like so. I could put in a comma. I could paste in the second object like so and call this my second column. Now by doing this, when I run the query, it will create a brand new list based on this definition of columns. If I jump back onto my SharePoint site, we can see that I have my first list. And if I pop that open, I have my first column and my second column based on that definition that I created on the Graph Explorer. Back into that Graph Explorer, if I go and copy and replace that body with a more complex example, we can see we have our new column definition based on a name where it's, the name is true or false, but the type is Boolean. We have date time, 
where the type is date time. And then within that, we have an object that defines how that date time is to function on that list. So it displays in default mode and there's a format type as well. So we have date only, but we also have date time. Now all these column definitions are available on a document, which I'll pop open shortly. We can also see the other examples of the hyperlink, a number, our calculated, which includes a formula. We have that fancy number where I have both the name, which is our internal name, and our display name, which is our friendly name. And then some more examples here based on text and also our choice column. So with that all in place, if I run this query, it fails. But the reason behind that is the display name for my list is called a new list. And obviously I've already got a new list on my SharePoint site. So I could call this my new list two. And if I run the query now, it should succeed. I jump back onto SharePoint, go into site contents. We'll see my new list two. And if I pop that open, I now have all those columns based on that definition that's been created in the Graph Explorer. So some of the documents I'm going to include in the description below include the following, which explains how we can relate to the Graph API using the SharePoint API. So in this case, we're using the Sites endpoint. There is the equivalent for the SharePoint REST API version 2 so that we can use exactly the same body and get back the data that we require using the SharePoint action in Power Automate. When it comes to creating your list, there is some documentation that shows you the display name, the structure of columns, how to use names and the data types. And then if you want to explore those data types in more detail, for instance, you want to have a look at how the choice column is defined. If I click on the type here, we can see an example of a choice column, which includes those choices, but also how they should be displayed by default on SharePoint. So with that in mind, if I jump back on to my Power Automate flow, we can quickly explore these actions and see how it's built. Now the first action is all about getting the ID. And I mentioned that you need to get the ID of the SharePoint site in order to call the API endpoint that will create that new list. So we're actually using the version one of the SharePoint REST API, but quite simply, you use the send an HTTP request to SharePoint, you select the site address where you want to create that new list, the method is get, and the URI here is underscore API forward slash site forward slash ID. That will get us the ID. On to the next action, it's all about creating that list. And again, site address is based on that site where you want to create it. The method is post, and the URI has been translated from the graph URI into the equivalent SharePoint API. So in this case, you'll see it's underscore API version 2.0 forward slash sites. We then pull across the ID from the action above. You could of course make this fix like I did in the Graph Explorer, but we have the option of making it dynamic by using that action above. And I'll include the expression on screen now in case you're unable to see it. But with that in place, all you need next is the body. And the body is identical to the Graph Explorer and the example that's created on the documentation. We have the display name and description, and then we have our definition of columns. Now I did think as an extension to this video, I could show you how we could create a list definition, maybe in something like an Excel sheet, where we can define both the name and the data type and then create the columns array dynamically. So you could therefore create an Excel sheet with a definition for your list, pass that Excel file and then dynamically create lists on the SharePoint sites of your choice. Now where this comes in particular handy is when you're building lists across multiple sites. If you're using test and dev, this sort of exercise will make your life a lot easier when it comes to testing out your new Power Apps, etc. So with that action in place, the next one is purely to create a link onto the SharePoint site because by default, even though you create that list via the API, it doesn't add a link onto the SharePoint site. So Again, pick the site address, the method is post, we're using the SharePoint version one API here, which calls the quick launch here, we pass some data in the body, and the only thing to be wary of is the name of the list. So in this case, my list is called a new list. 
of course, we're creating a link directly to that new list. So make sure that if you are creating a list name dynamically, you also pass that list name into the URL so that it matches the location of your new list. Finally, for the purpose of the demo, I also created an item. And uh, this is probably the least efficient way of doing it, but I purely wanted to demonstrate how to create an item in your new list. If there was a reason to create thousands of items, then there is a batch method within the SharePoint REST API. But by defining the list in this compose, I can use the native action to create a single item. I can put that dynamic value into the list name. And by doing so, I then get the item parameter that you can see on screen. And with that, I can then send an object. So that object contains all the column names and then either strings, booleans, numbers, etc., depending on the data type. And that's what ultimately allows me to create that item in the list that's only been created as a result of the actions that happened previous in this flow. And that's the end of the demo. So hopefully you've learned how to use the Graph API to build out your Microsoft lists using the SharePoint REST API call in Power Automate. I would love to hear in the comments how you've used this in your own solution. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.